Hi everyone, welcome to my Sherline studio. I'm Sybil Muschik and behind the camera as usual is Joshua Blanc. Now I promised you that we would talk a little bit about a different kind of registration and I'm going to take you through it very quickly because this is not the one I use but it is useful if you're doing uh, printing from just a plexi plate, and which I did for many years. I have a sheet that is 10 inches by 12 inches, which is two inches bigger than my gel plate, which is eight by 10. So you divide the difference, uh, two inches and a half, so it's inch all around. And then I have ruled the line eight by 10 for where the plate is going to fit and then you just line it up and you tape it down and you're good to go for registration. Now of course it's a good idea for your sheet that you're going to be registering to be the same size as 10 by 12 or you're going to have a problem because you want to line it up with those corners. And a lot of papers you know uh, come much smaller like eight and a half by 11 uh, you have to usually cut them, so it, it's that's another bother as well. This sheet, of course, this is a watercolor sheet, and that's not the same size either, so it does give you a bit of a problem. But so if you follow those uh, rules uh, for registering, then you're going to be fine. But I usually like to uh, put my paper down, and then I take tape. And I tape all this. I'm not going to do it now. I'm just going to show you. And then it just flips back and forth. And it's in perfect register each time. I call that Gorilla registration, but it works for me. <laughs> and I think a lot of other people use that. First off, uh, we want to talk about, and I'm going to bring up my little 5x7 plate just to demonstrate this. We're doing graphite again, graphite transfers. And uh, this is the original drawing here. And I'm, I'm just doing scribbly things. And then uh, you place it on the gel plate, rub the back, and then you can also, without having to use color, if you don't want color, you can transfer the graphite drawing just using um, glazing liquid or the matte medium. Now, just a heads up, because matte medium uh, is um, quite, uh, it prepares uh, whatever surface. So if you're using a water media, like watercolor paints or even pencils, they're going to beat up on you. So that isn't a good thing if you're using watercolor. So we're going to use more of the satin glazing liquid that's worked. Uh, and I usually add it to my uh, paint as well, even though I'm using acrylic paint you can still do the background in watercolor. So all that works. And I just wanted to show you the difference. There isn't a lot of difference between the two. When I uh, did the prints, then uh, this one was the matte medium, the satin, uh, sort of the, uh, satin glazing liquid, sorry. And this is the matte medium and there's almost no difference. This is a little bit more precise but if you're going to be using water media anyway and, and painting some areas, then having a strong graphite line isn't so important. So I just, I will do one small demonstration for you. And I started the drawing a little bit ahead of time. And we're just, we're doing shading here. This is an HB pencil. Don't do too much uh, graphite as it resists water media as well. It just sort of beads up. But then place, this is exactly five by seven, so I can just place it. Well, the trouble is with gel plates, they get a bit bigger over time, <laughs> but that's okay. So. And you'll see it's quite a well, just a little bit at the top more, which we'll is rub it down a little bit harder. I think I've mentioned in the last video how much muscle you have to have to do printmaking. 
Okay. So it's made a nice transfer and we're just going to use um, just a, what is that anyway, just a garbage sheet and we're going to put the medium on here and just roll it out. That's why you tape it down. <laughs> we started the morning off in an interesting way already so it is par for the course. Uh, Okay, get the roller to work. Uh, as with any transfer, you want to make sure that you take the majority of the medium or paint off, or it's not going to lift. This is just a releasing agent. If you have too much of it on there, it's not going to release the image. I think it's just craft paper. And let's see if that works. And it should. Obviously you're not going to be doing water media on this. But you could use colored pencils and things of that nature. And it did transfer beautifully. So craft paper works well too. And then you can go into it and do whatever. So, and that's this way you don't have to worry about color so much, which comes in handy later on when we do our next step. Okay, to finish off with a little gel plate here, this is a five by seven. Uh, that's a Jelly Arts uh, plate, by the way. And uh, we're just going to add a little bit of baby oil, mineral oil. Smells nice. Cleans off the graphite really well. And then just take a baby wipe after that and to get any other residue off. Because if you want to do another graphite transfer after that, make sure everything is clean, it really helps. And I just dip it in water to finish to make sure it's not greasy. Baby wipes have a little bit of alcohol, so that works great. And that plate's ready to go for the next session. Okay, just bringing up our eight by 10 plate. I don't have a bigger plate yet. I'm contemplating on it. So here is my drawing. I'll just put the plate here aside for a second of a pelican. Um, last Monday, I was visit, uh, visited by a whole flotilla, is that what you would call it, Josh? Saying, yeah. <laughs> of pelicans. There must have been 40 or 50 of them all in formation, all in their own little individual rows, wheeling around. We'll try and, uh, sh I took some videos of that and we'll try and piece that into the video. They're amazing animals and uh, very organized. They're sort of the bees of the bird world. <laughs> so I already started the drawing and I just want to enhance the graphite a little bit to make sure that it works. I have my bridge and we're just going to go over some of the lines. It will probably transfer anyway. And this will take a few minutes, so listen to Josh's nice music.
This is HB pencil, graphite pencil. And I'm just doing a little bit of shading. And I don't know if the um, the leader, this is a breeding, um, um, it's like a little comb or something. And uh, But he was the only one to have these black speckles and it seemed to be the leader of the group. So I have to do some research to see whether that was sort of the patriarch of the group giving all the orders. These weeds in the front here are just reeds. They have these little knobs on the ends. We'll see if that transfers. And so we're going to try and do some watercolor um, over this graphite um, transfer. And I'm using Fabriano paper, which is not my favorite paper for watercolor, but it seems to work really well with the transfers. Um, some of the other watercolor papers have a little bit more texture so you don't want a really hot press either because then you know uh, it's harder to get a wash on and so forth and it might be a little bit more resistant uh, and beat up uh, because of the graphite and possibly acrylic that's on the page so as usual we're goofing off being experimental and uh, having loads of fun here at Sherline studio so Stay with me and um, grab a cup of coffee or whatever your favorite drink and um, let's get to the next stage. So I've placed my drawing on top of the 8x10 gel plate. We're just going to rub it down really well. And we're going to do a transfer only with the glazing medium. So make sure you get all the details. And you can peek a bit to see if it's... Oh yes. So this is another way of doing a transfer. I know we've done photo transfers and uh, quite a few people do magazine cutouts as a transfer. So this is different. This is a little bit closer to uh, drawings so that you can actually do your own drawings uh, in graphite and then transfer that. And then you can paint them however you want with acrylic or watercolor. So we're gonna try and attempt watercolor today. So we're going to just use the satin glazing liquid and the less is more rule applies here of course. Don't mess with it too much because you don't want to disturb the graphite. This is a release coat and you just might want to make sure the entire plate is wet. You can see if it's you haven't covered something. Let's look at it sideways. It's not so easy because it's not a paint layer where you can distinguish it very easily. And here's hoping. And we'll register that as it, at the same time. And okay. <laughs> Always looking for my Beren. <laughs> And I'm just going to let it sit on there for a bit. The Fabriano paper has a rough side and a smoother side. So either side works, I'm sure. We'll register it just in case we need that. 
and it'll just flip back and forth easily as we need it. Okay, we're going to just do a little bit more, a little bit, because it's this watercolor paper, so it has far more texture, we're just going to put a lot more pressure on it. And if need be, we might put a little bit more. It actually turned out pretty good. Well, maybe we'll try that. We'll just see if we can get it a little bit darker. I didn't want to use acrylic paint at this point. Um, because the acrylic paint will resist the watercolor paint. Then you have beading problems. In this case, we don't want beading problems. <laughs> okay, picked up a little bit more. That's good. Now we can set the plate aside. We don't need it anymore. Okay, I will get my trusty little watercolor. This is my travel palette. And we have a, we don't need this. And a bit of water. I'm gonna be using some watercolor brushes. Uh, this is a Galleria Round Windsor Newton. Most of my brushes are Windsor Newton. So keep those handy. So we're ready to start the painting. I have the photo in front of me here of our little pelican, one of many. And here's that mark I told you about, that this dark spot that wasn't evident in any of the other pelicans. And he does look, um, I presume it's a male, I don't know. Um, and here's that breeding comb. And he does look a little bit uh, worse for wear, doesn't he? <laughs> So I, I have it in front of me as well, that, so I, it's got something to work on. And uh, I have my brushes and my water handy. And we're just going to start with uh, wetting the background, putting a... I have my light table uh, at an angle here because uh, I want the paint to run down. And we're just going to put some blue in the background. We'll just keep that fairly moist. The water wasn't actually blue that day. It was uh, more on the gray side. So we'll make sure that's reasonably wet but not soaking. I'm working on the, uh, you can see sort of a pebbly background here. So this is the Fabriano paper and this is the rougher side. We'll see how that works. I was hoping that it uh, wouldn't resist the paint as much as it's done with some of the other ones. Okay, so let's, Bang some blues in there. We'll make a little puddle. This is phthalo blue. Maybe mix a little bit of ultramarine in there. And we're just going to take it down with a little bit of the orange. This will gray the color a bit using your compliments. We'll gray the color a bit. And we're going to just lighten it with water.
And as, as we're coming down, I'm going to just keep lightening. But we want it fairly dark behind the our little uh, pelican. Well, he's not so little, actually. We're not going to get any back runs because I'm working with wet paper here. It will just give us some interesting details. And as we come forward, I'm just going to lighten it and lighten it some more. And then we'll add more details later. My brush is very saturated, so I don't actually have to wet the paper. And you can see the little ones coming down, and that's good. I can cover up his feet because uh, they're underwater anyway. line work in there a little bit. I've taped the sides so that it will have a clean edge when we finish. And I'm just going to make sure we have all our details down here. Okay, while it's still wet, I'm going to throw in a little bit more color at the top here. We're not getting too much resistance, so it's all good. Just wipe it away around the pelican so that okay and if you have made a wee boo boo here you can just wipe it back but it's very absorbent you can't scrub back very much If you want um, to get some wave action because the paper is wet, you can take some of it back. And you can add maybe some of that orange blue combination just to have some gray and some warm areas just to create interest in the in the water And because uh, you've got all those shadows and things on the bottom here, um, that will echo nicely. And that dries, it will dry much lighter. This is the nature of watercolor. We'll do a few of those shadows down there. So phthalo blue, a little bit of ultramarine, and some orange. If you want to make it grayer, you add a little bit of yellow. and Or you can add a little bit of this uh, quinacridone um, azo gold. And just a titch. So you get a nice dark color without it uh, creating mud. 
So you can just outline some of the shadow areas. There's a shadow, a dark shadow right here under the the pelican's beak. Now the pelicans don't actually breed here. They have a, a lake called Stum Lake that is in the Caribou Chilcotin that is a reserve uh, just for the these birds. We almost had them breeding here, um, but we had some really insane person chase them in a motorboat. And then of course they decided not to do it. And the shadow back here, we just put it in, but it's more bluish. We'll just add a little bit of that in there. Now I'm just demonstrating what you can do and, and this isn't going to be a final you know, work of art as usual. I just want to give you the basics of what can be done. Okay, we're putting in the shadows here. Um, I think we can just let that dry for now and let's start on the beak. So a little bit of water. And we'll just use the yellow. And just bang in the... This is the highlighted area. And the eye is very yellow all around the eye. It's sort of like a membrane-y thing right here. And just a bit of a shine right there. We'll just leave that. And then here, this piece. Just add a little bit of orange to that. That area is quite light. Well, I'm just amazed how well it's taking the watercolors, so. bottom part of the beak is much darker. We'll just outline it a little bit so we know where we're going. And they have this little tiny, it almost looks like a tooth or something that's right there. And we're going to go into the orange. Um, all my watercolors are Windsor Newton, except I have some whole bean colors, but not much.
and then there's a bit of a I will darken that in a second here. Okay, and there's a foot, but it's underwater, so it's going to be more of a bluish orangey foot. And in my photograph, I don't have the beak reflecting. It's all kind of dark, so we're not going to worry about it anyway. Okay, we'll add a few details here with our dark. And here's that, um, it's like a crown, isn't it? And this is quite dark in here, so we're going to add, take our orange, a little bit of the blue, phthalo and ultramarine, and a little bit of the red to give us that darkness here. So the bottom part of his beak is quite dark. And we'll just outline that area or that overhang. Wonder if he uses it like a little bit of a tooth as well. You know, to open open cans. <laughs> Opening cans. <laughs> Thank you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Just go back to our browns. If you mix your complements, um, not quite 50-50 or whatever it takes to get the gray or black, um, you'll get a brown. So that's a nice way of doing a brown. So you're getting a neutral color. So down here he has, um, and I say he advisedly, it could be a matriarch. which is quite possible, especially considering the breeding home. Just to soften that up a bit, run a bit of water. And A little bit of blue in there. So a wet kind of in wet kind of situation here. Let that spread a little bit. So just a few little details. And then the 
side of his neck has got a bit of like a bit of a shadow or it makes it round. And again we'll take that down. <clears throat> so this paper is a bit of a challenge. Uh, it doesn't work like the usual watercolor paper. Every stroke um, sort of sinks in. But on a little bit of glue up at the top here, just a hair. And you want some volume. And I just want to strengthen around the eye. Whatever this sort of strange stuff is that he has here by his eye. <clears throat> So I'm sure you could go on and on with all the details here. Okay, I'm just softening some of these harsh lines. And that shadow's not too bad. There was a bit of a line here. A little more water. Yeah, see, you can't really scrub anything on here. Whatever. <laughs> okay, um, we could darken the shadows a bit more, but we get the idea. Okay, weeds. We're at the weeds. So, okay, back to... I'm just going to do the weeds in sort of this blackish color. Uh, introducing the green is just like introducing a foreign color. and Not really that great a thing to do. Okay, a little bit of blue, then the orange to neutralize it. There, see, it's all pretty better. A little bit of the ultramarine. And we'll just give that a shot, I think. Just swish them in there. Anyway, you get the idea of all these little weeds that are in the front. Again, with a darker color, just uh, you've got the graphite, but we've lost it a little bit in the, doing the watercolor, and I did put some blue in. It kind of echoes the blue of the water too, which is nice, it really reflects into the white. here and as I said I wasn't really too thrilled with this paper ordinarily I would do this in arches
take some of the blue that we had from earlier just to make the head stand out a little bit more. So we'll mix up our nice blue gray. Ooh, intense. That's ultramarine for you. So a nice little puddle. And I'll just take it down a bit. And we'll do it on dry. So we just basically go around your areas here and then just wipe it away. That's the cunning plan anyway. And it just um, makes the bird pop a little bit. There we go. So just last little touches here. Um, I want to bring a little bit of the blue. Now I think I'll, because this, if you do a dry wash, um, it just grabs the paint immediately and then leaves a hard edge. Oh, we don't want to do that. We'll leave some of the reflections, white reflections. And so we just have to sort of gauge where these are. And there's a little bit of white here. Now we're getting a bit of bleeding here. Not good. A little bit of blue here on the edge of the neck. There were some lovely little details that I don't know if we can put that in. It's kind of the brown of the, the reflection and the, all I did was sort of go kind of wiggly. Maybe bring in some of that deep red and the
reflection can be quite a bit darker here. Or the shadow, sorry. Yeah. So it's the shadow. A little neck on the Is what it is I guess <laughs> but um, again you'll take your time doing it at home and uh, not furiously rushing like here but you get the idea of our little pelican uh, it will look a little different once it's dry too so well it's been fun again here at Shoreline Studio thanks so much for watching hope to see you again soon for the next episode don't forget to like and subscribe so we can keep our channel going and uh, we'll see you another time. Bye for now.